G'day guys, it's uh, Aiden here again. Welcome back to my workshop. Um, we've come to week five and six of my uh, my bowl turning challenge and uh, let's see what I've got to say about these last two. Chickens are playing up. Um, so the first one is this little uh, macadamia bowl. It's you know, good for you. Good for you. You put your peanuts in it. Um, I think I was a little bit under time constraints when I did this one, so I wanted something that was small, uh, easy to sort of do, nice and simple. Um, the the foot detail on this is similar to the the black butt one that I did um, in a previous video, and I think it came out a lot better on on this particular bowl. It fits nicer, and when when it's sitting on a flat surface, I don't know if you can see very well there, but it sort of just holds it up a little bit, gives it a little bit more of a footing, um, almost like it's in two sections, which I really like. I like that aesthetic, lifts it up, gives it a little detail that is um, a little bit dainty and takes away from it just being a plain old simple boring bowl. Uh, so that's really good. The wall thickness on this is very consistent, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, there's no little nipple at the bottom where you usually you find nipples or, or dimples in it. Um, realistically, the only problem I have with this piece is that um, there's a lot of faults in this wood. You can see that it's got a couple of knots there, but also there's some smaller cracks that are running through the whole piece so it's never going to be used as anything but a decorative bowl or maybe you know put your peanuts in it or some lollipops or something that's not going to fall out so you know I'm using I'm using a lot of the wood out of out of my my rack here and a lot of it is full of faults so it's good practice I suppose to see how I can deal with um, dealing with the cracks and and the imperfections it's also a good excuse to get rid of a lot of it because it can be a bit of a pain in the ass to try and think about how you're going to deal with those things. So as a all in all, quite happy with this one. It's nice, it's simple. I feel like anyone could happily have it in their house. Uh, there's nothing that is blaringly obvious to me that's going, it's, there's a, there's a fault, there's a problem. You know, I've, I've finished it well. Um, it, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this one. There's not a lot to say. Um, but it's good to know that I can pump out one of these <clears throat> quite quickly, quite simply. Not a whole lot went wrong. That's good to know. So, you know, look at it as a production item more than a decorative art piece, I suppose, uh, for, for the future. Um, but yeah, it's nice stuff to work. I've got, I've got this macadamia, or what I've been told is macadamia, and I've got some other stuff that I'll do a video on later, I'm sure. And it's a real dark purple colour. Um, I so I got I got a lot of this timber when I bought my lathe from a from an arborist here in Perth, and so he wrote down the name of everything on the log that it came with, and not all of it is what it says it is and I know that just from past experience with timber um, but I've never dealt with macadamia before so who knows the pictures on the internet go both ways it, it, it shows pictures of it being this color and it also shows it being a darker color they've both got similar grain patterns who knows maybe there's uh, two different macadamia species out there or something um, that it's a different colour wood, not too sure. Um, but yeah, nice little bowl, happy with it, I'll put it in the collection. This one is a bit of a, uh, a funky funky little trip down an art, art lane, I suppose. Um, jacaranda from my big stash of jacaranda, we'll be seeing more and more of these, I think, as I go through my 
my wood. Um, I've never done a shape like this before, and I'd seen some pictures on Instagram of similar shapes, I think, with, you know, a bit taller at the top and more of like a, more of that sort of size at the bottom. Um, but I had a big chunk and I wanted to see how it went. So I found it quite fun to try and blend the two shapes together um, in a, you, usually when you're turning, you're thinking of the bottom, blending the curve in and then finishing at the top. So it's nice and round. Whereas this one, you've got to, you, you've got to find the point where it's aesthetically pleasing to look at. In this case, it's, it's pretty good. And it looks like it's about a third of the, the height. Um, and so dealing with that, putting a transition on it and making that transition not so drastic or not too drastic or, you know, there, there is a sweet spot for all of that. And I think I've done a pretty good job of that. And then comes the, the sanding and you don't want to round that edge over. You want that crisp detail. So there's a few, there's a few extra things to think about with that. Uh, I've never done a flat bottom bowl before like this. Uh, so again, another challenge. So this one, this one didn't have a whole heap of challenges in it apart from sort of refining technique and stuff for this foot. I like it. I'm going to keep trying to do something along those lines. This one, haven't done the shape before, hadn't done a flat bottom bowl, putting a bit of art in it as well. Um, was a thought on a uh, different tangent, I suppose. And you know, I've got a hollow form inside uh, out of Jarrah and I ebonized a section of it. So there was a same sort of shape. There was a distinct um, junction in the shape and, and that distinct junction, a section of it is ebonized. And so I wanted to do something similar with this, seeing as uh, Jacaranda is such a pale timber, having a um, a contrast so so drastic I thought would look cool I think it does look cool um, though jacaranda doesn't have very much tannin in it so when I put some uh, some uh, ebonizing solution on a test piece it didn't really do anything it went a little bit gray but it wasn't the effect I was going for I didn't want to paint it because that was not I wanted to get the grain pattern throughout the bottom here uh, and I didn't have any any inks or any anything like that floating around. I thought I had some in the house, but I must have misplaced it. Um, so I got my blowtorch out and did a little bit of uh, extreme pyrography on this one. And for never doing that before as well, I thought it's come out quite nice. I, it, it's a cool effect. Um, I'm not too sure about this rim where I've, I've bled over a little bit in the burning. I'm not upset. I think it's, I think it's fine. Um, but maybe next time, if I do something similar to this, then um, masking it up a bit better in some way, shape, or form to stop that bleed out of the charred edge out the front. But again, it does give it a cool little effect. It sort of ties the two. Um, elements together and yeah so that that's cool I went too thin on the bottom here um, I thought I had plenty of meat on it and then when I went to sand it pair it off at the bottom I realized I'd been a little bit too uh, bit too extreme on that one so um, Look, it's all it's all part and parcel of this challenge is to reflect, improve. Um, in my last video, I think I said that I went too thin on the bottom of one of those bowls as well when it when I had to return the bottom. This one is purely user or manufacturer error. Um, you know, you get to the end of turning, you get excited to do the next step. At least I do, and then I uh, maybe didn't think as much. 
it's not going to affect the the performance of the bowl at all, um, but you can hear the difference. Uh, I can feel it a little bit, um, but as long as no one drops anything sharp and pointy and heavy in the bottom, no one's going to know. So, well, apart from everyone watching. I like this. It's not really something I'm used to doing, the shape, but it's fun to branch out, see something different, do something different. And I'll take elements of this and pour it into other other upcoming projects. Um, I think if I mix the two together, maybe not like that, but something rounder like that that comes in in more less of a bowl shape and more of a vessel shape or a vase. I think that could be quite cool. Could work quite well. Um, Something different, I like that it's got an edge on it so your bananas don't flip out because we know how roly-poly bananas are. Um, but yeah, I think I think it was another successful two weeks of the challenge. Um, two more done and dusted and more to go, obviously. Um, so yeah, that's this uh, little critique done. I sort of do them on the fly, so if I've forgotten anything, don't hesitate to ask more questions. I'm happy to answer anything. Um, even if you tell me that this isn't macadamia, then go ahead and do it because I'm here to learn. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you for watching. Thanks for sticking around. I hope the videos are getting better or at least staying at a good quality. Uh, I want to. I want to know if it's go on the wrong way, tell me what you want, because um, I'm still learning and I want to make everything as, as good as possible for, for everyone. So thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching. There will be more coming. Um, I've got a lot of wood in here to turn. Uh, I don't have a whole heap of time, but I've got enough that I'll, uh, I'll keep doing this. And like I've said in the last video, I can't keep 52 bowls. So if you want something, let me know. Um, in between all of this, I'm still trying to get a website up and running. I've got an Instagram page, which I don't think I've linked anywhere, so I'll put that down so you can jump on and see what other stuff that I've done. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. I uh, hope to see you out there. Uh, if you see me on the streets of Perth, don't hesitate to say hello and say that you've um, loved or hated the videos. Um, I'm here for all kinds of feedback. So thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you on the next one.